So this is going to be a quick video on Hall effect sensors, which can be used as an on-off switch triggered by a magnet. Uh, very different from a reed switch, which is only momentarily activated when the magnet is brought near. The Hall effect will stay in the same condition until a magnet is applied or reapplied to change the condition. Uh, just to give you an idea of what the Hall effect sensor looks like, uh, they usually come on a strip. They're very tiny. Um, and you can see as compared to like a sample Mandalorian coin, how big each one of these is, and you only need one. Uh, the Hall effect sensor does need power to operate, so just know that going in. Uh, it operates anywhere from 5 volts to 30 volts. Um, I've got mine here wired in just using a uh, 5 volt supply as a test bed, and I've got a variable resistance box here. So I can play with the resistive values, which you do need to set up a resistor in the circuit to control the amount of current going to the hall switch, as well as act as a pull-up for the voltage. So uh, I've got a Ironman LEDI hooked up to this circuit, and the hall switch is all set up. And I've got a simple neodymium magnet. I put a piece of blue tape to identify which is the north pole of the magnet, and the other side is the south pole. So when the north pole of the magnet is applied to the hall, you notice that the light activates. When you take that same magnet and apply the south pole side, it acts like an off switch and takes the power away, thereby turning the light off. So again, when you bring the north side, the circuit activates. When you bring the south pole, the circuit turns off. So let's turn it back on and talk about the resistance for a moment. So in this type of circuit, you would have a resistor wired in, and I'm simulating that by using a resistor substitution box. And I've got it currently set for 68 ohms, which provides at five volts, 22.33 milliamps of current, which is more than sufficient to drive this LEDI at full power and keep it under the max limit for the Hall effect which this one happens to be a 60 milliamp. So the resistor serves a few purposes. First, to prevent the circuit from drawing too much current. And second, also to provide a pull-up function. And what pull-up does is it guarantees that when the sensor turns on, you will get your five volts applied to whatever you have connected. In this case, it's the LEDI. If you adjust the resistive value, you'll notice that the LEDI can be dimmed. If I add more resistance, it will start to dim or if I lower the resistance, it will start to brighten. Now, as I mentioned before, we were at 68 ohms, which works perfectly for this circuit for on and off. Now, if you have too little resistance, you will make the eye brighter, but you start to reduce the amount of current overload protection, and you start to disable the sensor because now the sensor cannot effectively turn off. So even though I turn the sensor off, we've still got a little bit of voltage going to this LEDI. So you have to make sure that you have the right amount of resistance for the amount of power that you need to draw so that this sensor operates properly. So I'm hoping that this video helps you out a little bit. Uh, and again, so you apply the North Pole and you have it as an on switch and you apply the South and it acts as an off switch. So uh, it's not a very difficult circuit to wire, and Hall effect sensors are very cheap, um, and they're very simple to wire. If anybody wants a wiring diagram, uh, I could probably whip one up and uh, put it out there. Uh, but I uh, just kind of wanted to talk about this for a second and show you what you can do with a Hall effect sensor, because I know some folks have been uh, using reed switches, so this is kind of a step up from a reed switch. So hopefully this helps, and uh, take care.